narcissism. Fam, I'm gonna be honest with you. If it wasn't for the plethora of information that's out there, you know, describing what narcissism is, giving examples of narcissism, I'm telling you right now, I would still be like confused and like, what the hell, you know? But until I found out about narcissism and, and was able to, you know, recover from that shit, wow. So if any of you guys are in a relationship, married, or, you know, in a, uh, in a job environment where you have people acting a certain way and you're like, what the hell is going on? This dude, you know, check out narcissism and I promise you all the pieces of the puzzle is going to fit. And these narcissists are so paranoid, right? Because the worst thing they ever wanted to happen is to have all this information out there describing their predatory, um, negative, deceptive, manipulative personality, right? They've been getting away with it for so long, right? The gaslighting, you know, all of the smear campaigns and the devaluations and all of this that, that, that you have to go through year after year after year, right? And you can't understand it. You think, oh, because you know it's not jealousy or envy. It's more than that. It's the type of person that, you know, when you first met them, was your ideal mate. Did everything you enjoyed, said, said everything you liked, I mean, was just this perfect person for you, right? And then you see the switch. And you're like, what the heck? Wait a minute. You... Because a person who's, you know, meek, a person who's, you know, feminine and, you know, low-key, you know what I'm saying, non-aggressive, you know, non-confrontational, right? And then all of a sudden, that person becomes that person. That's not how they go. See, what happens is they get you behind closed doors and then they take that mask off, right? But then in public, at work or wherever they are in the public where other people see them, they the most personable, charismatic, you know, sweet, you know, great parents, you know what I'm saying? They love their kids. But behind closed doors, it's the total opposite. The children are neglected, you know what I mean? They only use as possessions. Your significant other, they just there just to uh, be a punching bag, right? Because if because if you get too high and you become too successful, they're gonna try to bring you down. But it's gonna be in a in a passive aggressive manner. You know what I mean? They are very weak creatures, uh, but they give you this persona like they're so strong and have their life together, but they don't. And, they, and the jealousy and envy that they have is because of the self-hatred they have for themselves. Maybe when they was a kid, you know, they didn't receive love or they wasn't nurtured. And so not everything has to be about them. And they have this inner intrinsic self-loathing for themselves. And the only way they can get any type of comfort or any type of, you know, supply is to make them feel better than other people or to have other people look at them in a positive light, which that's when they have their mask on. Because they know if they ever, if, if people ever really knew who these people were, no one would mess with them. No one would have been around them. I'm telling you, my ex, I don't even talk to this chick at all. You know, only only conversation we have is about our kids, our sons. You know, and that's it. Because there's no, there's never, you can't co-parent with these people, you know, because everything you want to do with the children, they're going to deny, they're going to, you know, put a wedge between that. And, and they know, you know, that they are not taking care of your kids the way you want to be taken care of, as well as, you know, that anything you say to want to, you know, have some type of parental, you know, persuasion, not happening, not happening. I mean, to the point where even if it's something that they know going to benefit the child, no, if it ain't on their terms, it's not happening. You know what I mean? And <laughs> it's crazy. I'm just sitting up here thinking about this story of Matt Stafford 
NFL quarterback, Super Bowl quarterback, really, really good quarterback, one of the tops in the league. His wife goes on a podcast and, and discloses to the world that, yeah, uh, I dated my husband's backup quarterback, you know, to make him jealous, and it worked. Like, who does that? Why you want to go on a podcast and embarrass your husband? I mean, this happened over 20, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, right? So why are you bringing this up? You have four daughters with this man. He's nationally well-known, maybe worldwide well-known. Because he plays quarterback. He plays for, uh, what's that, the uh, the Rams, I think? Come on, man. He just won a Super Bowl two or three years ago, I think. And now the wife gets on a podcast and discloses that, yeah, I, I dated and slept with the backup quarterback when he was when we were in college at Georgia, so I can make him jealous. I don't I don't care, man. No man wants to hear that. You know, I mean, just flip it. And this is why narcissists are so particularly disturbing because anybody would know. Hold on, wait a minute. If the tables were turned and Matthew Stafford went on a sports show or sports podcast, Club Shay Shay or whoever, right, and said that when I was in college. I had sex and dated my wife's best friend. They never knew about it. She never knew about it. But now we're married over 20 years and have four beautiful girls. But yeah, in college, I, I dated my, my wife's best friend. Come on, man. So she had to know there has to be some type of reciprocity in thinking when you do think, but narcissists, they never do. And I'm not calling his wife a narcissist, but that was a narcissistic action. That was narcissistic behavior, you know, to want to bring your, to, to devalue your husband. That's what they call a smear campaign. Know what I mean? So, family, like I say, do your research on narcissism. Check it out because I promise you, once you do the research and you find out that, because the, they all do the same things. They lie, cheat, and steal. Manipulate, deceive. Okay? So make it light on yourself because I promise you, once you do the research and find out who they are, pew, you're gonna be out at five thousand. And and it's like a it's like a, a weight off your shoulders, you know. Cause like because even when you understand them, when you even if you have kids with them, you still can be like, you know what? I'm gonna gray rock this. I'm going to cut off communication only when necessary, right? And then just, you know, parallel parent. You know, just do what I do when I with my kids with me. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know there's so much stuff that happens when you're dealing with narcissists. And and especially if you if you have to co-parent with them. Because they talking bad about you in front of in front of their kids. You know, they, you know, doing everything in their power to minimize your importance, saying, you know, they'll call you a deadbeat. They'll say you have never, ever done anything for the kids. And when you know that's totally the opposite, but this is the story they're telling everybody, right? So family, do your research. You know what I mean? And pay yourself first, not just in currency and money, but pay yourself first in spiritual currency, okay? Emotional and mental currency to build yourself up so you don't let these outside you know, negative forces come into your existence. Because remember, if your, your thoughts create your reality. Okay, and if there's positive thoughts, it's going to be a positive reality. If you're around positive people, it's going to be a positive outcome. Okay. All right, family, in the meantime, between time, may the most high society bring you joy. And being with is out of 5,000.